Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, today we're going to do another brief video on PFSense, and today we're going to be looking at blacklists uh, using PFSense. And so what we're going to do here is, uh, of course, I have that custom host file on my website, and uh, you can use that, and that doesn't get updated as much as I would like to. There are some ways to automate that. Now, PFSense does have one automated system in it, but there's some things that I add, like crypto mining and Facebook and a few other things that I put on mine that uh, not every list is going to have on it. And so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna have a quick look at, um, at this blocker, how to do the basic setups. We'll kind of start with this, that I am not the absolute expert in what we're doing here, but I know enough to get everything set up, have a network working right, and then uh, know how to bypass things like that. And so what we're gonna do though first is, uh, let's just go ahead and um, look at our, uh, just some a couple basics here on running your block lists. And this is actually kind of important because we need to understand how these lists work. So they kind of cascade out. now. Once we get into the internet, there's a few different things we can do here. So this re re uh, determines where things are running on websites. So if you go to any given website, in reality, it's the IP address you're going to, but you don't remember the IP addresses as easy as you remember the website URLs. And so uh, what, you, what you have is there's this entire name server system that runs behind the internet that when you go to a domain name, it redirects you to the correct place. Now, it's actually possible to hijack those, which could be a little bit dangerous. Um, we're not gonna really consider those. But when you are talking about building up a hosts file um, on a system, what you are doing is you are, um, you are actually manipulating the DNS on a local level. Now, your DNS is a cascading type system. Um, that's not right. There it is. <laughs> Whoops. All right. Um, so let me actually get rid of this one, which was a client system that we were testing something goofy with there. All right. So what we're looking at here is um, DNS is a cascaded system. So the closer you get to your computer, the greater the priority. So if you have your router saying to go to one uh, one location and your computer is saying to go to another location, then whatever is on the computer is going to take precedence. All right. So for example, if I have a my website at switch to linux.com and the router doesn't have anything to do with switch to linux.com, it's going to go out and go out into the internet. And whether you're on 1.1.1.1 or 9.9.9.9 or you're using your internet service provider's uh, DNS registry, whatever you happen to be using, uh, you are going to get whatever that system says the IP address should be. This is why if you change your name servers or some host record on a website, why it says, oh, it could take up to 24 or 48 hours to propagate to the internet. That's because these name server systems get cached. And so sometimes those things clear out the cache very quickly. Sometimes they clear them out not very quickly at all. I know where I'm at. It usually takes about seven hours to move everything over. So I always test things with a local IP address first. Now, if I wanted to have my router do something specific, I can put whatever that site is. So I'm blocking, for example, Facebook on my entire network. So you can't come onto my network and get on Facebook unless you bypass what my router does at the computer level. Now, since Facebook is a decentralized system, you really can't find a single IP address. So if I need to get on that for a client, I have other ways around that, which I'm going to talk about. So with that being said, uh, what does all this have to do with block lists? Well, what you're doing with block lists is you are causing requests to fizzle. So for example, if I come up here and I go to switched to Linux, uh, in fact, we're actually gonna pull this up with Firefox instead because there's times you will need to 
uh, reset your browser. So we'll go to switch to Linux up here. So if I go to switch to Linux, this is actually going to my server location. But if I wanted to kill switch to Linux on my computer, I can tell it to go to 1.127.0.0.1, which is the IP address thing that says fizzle into nothingness. It basically says go to the local host. Um, and so what we're going to do is we're just going to uh, just copy my switch to Linux there and just pasting that in. Now, in full practice, you do both the with and the without the www. So I'm going to go ahead and save that list. Um, and we're going to close Firefox and restart Firefox. You often have to reset the browser to do this. And then now you'll see it's unable to connect because I'm telling my local system to block switch to linux.com, which I don't want to do. So we're going to go ahead and unblock it. So now if I were to close that out, reboot it back up. Whoa, I do have to get rid of the start page there. But now you'll see that my site is back. That's because the computer does not have anything to do with switch to Linux. The router doesn't have anything to do with switch to Linux. So it goes out and it grabs that DNS from the internet. All right, so with that being said, I have a router system set up on my platform that I run a block list. So I'm using, uh, I'm using PF Blocker NG. So to install this, you wanna go to System and down to Package Manager. And then you'll see that this is the only package that I currently have installed. Uh, you can actually come over here and there's a lot of different packages out there that you can work with. Um, this is really the only one that I need for the functionality that I have. So when I install this, then what we have is under firewall tab. Now we have this PF blocker NG, and this is where we're going to be looking at things. Now, by default, what you do is you set up these general settings. Now the cron settings will determine how frequently does this go out and update the lists. So I have mine going out and whether it's to the internet or wherever it's going to grab its list, every 12 hours it's going out and, and grabbing those. So I do have it set every single 12 hours, it goes out and it updates the list. So if I update something on my custom lists, it will automatically get added. Um, if I, uh, if I'm, uh, I also have some automated lists in here that are already automated from other sources, those are also updated every 12 hours. And so inside of these, um, you can just kind of look through here and look at your different settings. This will determine where your ports are to, and I have it set up so that um, any of the ports, um, it's basically going to push everything out to all of the devices on my network. Now, if I wanted to say here's one device to not do that, we can actually come down here and we can set up a special rule for that we won't be looking into that. Now this is your update. If you make some changes here, then you might need to come in here. And usually what I just do is I'll just hit the reload button, make sure all is selected and hit run. And this is going to run all of my systems. Uh, these are alerts. If there's anything that shows up as an alert, it goes into there. And the next thing we're actually gonna have a look at, of course, this is um, IP4s, IP6s. Um, this is if we wanted to, you know, add or edit some, some system. We have GOIP. Um, I actually am not using these. If I were to getting some, some issues or whatever, if you're on a server that you're really sensitive to getting hacked by certain systems, you could enable that. If I determine that something is going on goofy, then I will actually disable some of those as well. Uh, for now, the system does a pretty good job of where it is. Of course, the logs, we can see what we have in the logs. What we're going to look at and consider, though, is this DNSBL. So this is, of course, your, your block lists. Now, the first thing we have here is just, again, your basic settings. You're going to make sure that you have this enabled. Uh, and this is going to look for, uh, look for anything in your blacklists. If that's not uh, enabled, then you can set all this stuff up and it's not going to do anything. Now, the second thing you want to do is you want to set up feeds. Now, there may be some feeds you can go on the Internet and hunt around for and look for. Um, what I'm actually doing on these ones is this STL block. This is actually the block. I'm not going to click on this because it'll kind of show you where I'm pulling things from. 
which I should probably put them internal on my network, but I don't. I have them external on the internet. I don't want to unveil where those are, so I'm not going to click that. But if I click the add, you can add a, just give it a new name, whatever your name is, and a description. And then this is where you are actually adding your feeds. So this is the source of your feed. So, you know, HTTPS forward slash forward slash blocklist.com, whatever it happens to be. Now, well, there are errors because I accidentally hit the button. I didn't, didn't mean to hit save. Um, but you need to give it a name, a description, um, any information that you have, the formatting, all these types of things. So you're going to add whatever you're going to add. And then your list action, you need to make sure that this is set to unbound. Disabled means the list will populate, but it will not actually do anything with it. Unbound means that it's going to actually apply these. Update frequency. Um, I don't I don't think I have these set because um, the cron, I might have it, I might actually have it set, maybe I might have it set every hour or something. Um, I'd have to check my settings. Um, never will never update it, of course, um, how often it must be within the cron interval. So I probably actually have this set to every 12 hours is my guess, uh, because that's what my cron is set at. So every 12 hours it's gonna update, and then every day of the week, I think I've just left, left this alone. The cron should override all this kind of stuff. Um, again, we're not going to be working with that, so I'm just going to click back to that and not save anything. So here you can see my action is unbound, so it is actually blocking. So I do have it set to every 12 hours. So that's what I, I do have it set at. So it is going to update itself. Now the other place you can go is over here into your easy list. Now this is, they have two list settings here and you can click in on these and see what is actually blocked in these. Here's different ad server systems. So ad servers, ad server pop-ups, adult ad servers, adult ad server pop-ups. And then the privacy has tracking servers and tracking international. So all types of things for advertisements and tracking information. So I have all of these enabled. I have them all unbound. Um, I have my uh, update frequency. In fact, I'm gonna change that to every 12 hours. Um, and then we're just gonna keep uh, Monday there. And now filter via Alexa. This is not an Amazon Alexa. This is the Alexa ranking on a site. Um, this will enable you to bypass anything that is a top ranking site on SEO Alexa rankings. Uh, I leave that disabled because I don't care. I'm gonna go ahead and save that one because I realized I had my update frequency set in a way I didn't like. So we can actually add other things. Now they only have a couple different options in here to pick. So as of right now, there's really only two things I could select. And then I just have it set as easy list. So now anytime I make any changes or adjustments, I might need to come up here and um, uh, come up here and uh, update the system. So there is another factor here though, and that is what if you need to whitelist a particular site? So barnesandnoble.com, for example, has an affiliate program through cj.com. So we'll come down to their thing, click on their affiliate list, and if I click my sign up here, you'll notice that it will not allow me to connect. And that's because my block file, and this is actually in my main system, it is blocking cj.com. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and whitelist this. So coming down here and what I found is that I need to, I, I have typically found I need to add it both places here. Now we're doing cj.com and .cj.com. So the cj.com is just dealing with that domain. The .cj.com will whitelist any, um, any of the other subdomains. Uh, so I also want to put the same thing here under the whitelist. I thought it should be just the top one, but I've noticed that I get consistent results when I have them both set. So we're gonna go ahead and save that. And now since I made a change, I wanna come over here. I wanna hit my reload and run. And now this is gonna be running my systems. It's blocking different things. You can see that it just whitelisted a bunch of domains on the CJ uh, domain there. And so now we're going to go ahead and close Firefox again, open it back up. Let's go back to bn.com. 
And if my calculations are correct, we should uh, now be able to actually access cj.com. So now we can. So there's how we manipulated a whitelist, even though it is on my blacklist. So the blacklist is going to go, and then the whitelist is going to go in case something finally added this later. That's why it does that. Now, since all of this is done on my router level, there is a way to bypass this. If I were running something like this on the computer level, there's really no other way to bypass this except for uh, delete everything out of your host file. But since, uh, as you guys saw, my host file only contains your basic default stuff, there's nothing actually on the host file of the computer itself because I want everything set on the router level. Because of that, if I need to get around to something else, so for example, uh, facebook.com is always one of my controls because it's blocked on my system. Now, if I need to get around my host file because I'm running this on a router level, what I can do is I can change my DNS settings on the computer itself. So on Mint here, we're gonna go down to network settings. It's gonna work the same on each different system. You just have to figure out where it is on your settings. I'm gonna click my gear and then go down to IP4. We're gonna turn off automatic DNS and we're gonna use cloud flares. And of course, there's this 1.1.1.1 and 1.0.0.1 as their backup. Now you'll see that this is still set here. So we're just going to toggle our connection on or off. And now you will see that our DNS is 1.1.1.1 and Facebook will now work. So if I need to bypass my block list on the system, I can go ahead and do it using that. Now, occasionally you'll find that Cloudflares is a little goofy. So 9.9.9.9 and 9.9.4.4 is another one. Um, I thought that was Google, but I think I don't think that actually is. I think this one belongs to somebody else, and I think Google has another one, maybe all of your sixes. Um, but this will enable you to use your DNS. Now, why this works is because the router itself is calling your DNS settings. So if I were to come up here and it might be under system, I'd have to, I'd have to find this in the settings again. Um, uh, I have to find that in the settings again, so I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna spend some time finding that right now. Um, but I can actually set up my system to use 1.1.1.1, etc. Uh, but since I'm setting it to use my basic uh, ISPs. Uh, DNS route, I can bypass it by putting something else in here and disabling automatic. And that means that this computer is going to go right past whatever the router does and go right out to the internet using these server settings. This is very useful because on my other business, um, I do quite a bit of things utilizing things like analytics and some ads and things, which are all blocked on my basic system. And so this makes it extraordinarily easy to just bypass all that settings for a simple in uh, instance where I need to get around my, my uh, block settings for the purpose of doing some basic things. In fact, that's actually what I would prefer to do rather than um, rather than whitelist my CJ domain. I'd rather just keep it blacklisted for now. Um, so that's kind of what uh, what you can do with uh, with getting everything everything set. So I'm just gonna go ahead and delete these guys from the domain. I'm not gonna go ahead and reload it. I'm just gonna let the system. Uh, clear itself out when it's set to run again, which is about another five or six hours. So uh, hopefully that was helpful for you to figure out just how to do some basic blocking on the network level with PFSense. Um, also how you can bypass it. And by the way, uh, our bypassing it by going to the 1.1.1.1. This will also work if you have a router that supports custom block lists or things like that. Um, then uh, you do actually, you can use the same method for your router even if you're not running PFSense. So uh, that video is uh, just how to get those block lists going. Let me know if that was helpful for you and if you want to see more PFSense stuff, what, uh, what is it that you want to see. 
uh, let me know in the uh, comments there. And uh, have a look at the links either right above me or in the description down below if you'd like to help support the channel and check out the social media accounts if you would like updated on when videos are coming out. So thanks for coming along and hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.